The Moxie, the Moxie, the latest handy quilter machine, 15 inch long arm. With the eight foot loft frame configuration, you have an option to have a quilting from the back kit. And that's one of the optional extras that we've packaged our Moxie with as an introductory offer. So up until the 31st of December, 2020, if you decide to go for a Moxie, there's a fantastic deal on. Just check out our website, give us a call, email us, whatever you like. Uh, we can tell you more about it. So the Moxie has the optional quilting from the back kit, but as a result, you need a table. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you how we attach the quilting from the back kit and how we put the table on. You don't need many bits and pieces to do that. You need a pair of scissors for attaching the foam strips that will hold the table in place. And we need a Phillips screwdriver to do the rear handlebars. It also comes with a laser light and a sample of the pantographs, which is the drift pattern. It's a really nice one for beginners. And edge to edge quilting that will, you can do as a result of getting this option um, is a really good way for beginners to start their, on their long arm quilting journey. So let's, uh, let's go through how you do it. First of all, we want to make sure that the Moxie is running smoothly on the tracks. So just check that you've got it installed nicely. You'll have already set up your loft frame, which we did. And we're now adding on the quilting from the back kit. It also recommends that for ease of installation that you remove the rails. So there's two rails, the idler bar is the lower of the two and the take up bar is the upper of the two and those are just put towards the front. Uh, the idler bar is underneath. So there's nothing to hold the moxie in place. So as a result, just for safety, I'm going to put a channel lock on the wheel so there's no danger of it going towards the back of the frame while I'm doing this installation. So let's put the, uh, the backing, uh, the backboard on. So in our box, we get some instructions and we get some tape. So I've read the instructions. I think I understand them. They're pretty straightforward to be frank. And what it says is uh, that you need to make sure that the Moxie is running freely and removing the front rails which is pretty much what I've just said. Cut the double-sided foam tape to fit the crossbar supports and apply the adhesive side of the foam tape to all six crossbar supports. Now these are the crossbar supports. One, two, three, four, five, six, so that corresponds. So now we can just put the tape on these sections like so, the adhesive side down, and then just cut it. one I'm putting it so that it actually just sits on the cross brace there's a slight difference in level between the vertical I'm calling this the vertical and the cross piece where the rail is. I think that will sit better. It's interesting, isn't it, how much we rely on YouTube videos these days for things. Of course, to do the actual installation of the loft frame, um, there's a lovely app, the Built app, which makes life very much easier. I wouldn't say these are my straightest lines, but you know what? I don't think it makes any difference because it's going to hold it regardless. So this is the final one, number six. There we go. Got plenty of tape left over. So there's no danger of running out. Then next it says... Remove the protective cover from the tape on the three on the right side of frame. And starting at the right vertical brace, I'm gonna get my first piece of board from the box. Now 
Now these have like a protective cover on them. So I am going to remove that. And then I'm going to take the cover off these, the to reveal, re can't speak, to reveal the adhesive that the table is going to stick to. Okay, one. It's quite satisfying removing double-sided tape. Start this end. It's where you need fingernails. So starting this end, it recommends lining up. And what you don't want to do is put it onto the track. So line it up with the edge, the vertical. Just going to line that up there. I'm just kind of getting a feel for where this needs to go. so that it doesn't hit the track. That looks good. Push it down onto the cross braces. You can actually feel where the cross braces are. And you can see with screws, I just revealed. And then we do the same this side. That's good. If it had got stuck, I'd have known I'd done it wrong. All right, let's take this bit off. There we go, number two. Of course, that looks looks very wiggly. We won't do a close up of that shot. This is more difficult. I'm making it look more difficult than it is, to be frank. This is in order that when people watch the video, they think, well, that was a lot easier. I must be much better than, than Liz's. See, there is a reason to appear slightly incompetent. Right. And then the left side. Align it with the vertical. So I'm putting it up against the vertical. That's what we're doing. And then put this down like this. And I'm just checking that it's not fouling the track. And that it's straight. There we go. Beautiful. There's a little gap in the middle. That would be normal, I believe. I've not done this before, so I'm making a bit of an assumption there. Right, next, we're going to attach the rear handlebars. So in the box with the rear handlebars, I've got my rear handlebars. I've got my drift pattern all ready to go. Oh, now, what they say to do is there's a little protective cover which covers over 
where the rear handlebars connect onto. And the rear handlebar connector looks like this. Okay. It's that board, that circuit board. So to reveal the circuit board, you loosen off, but do not remove the two screws at the back here. And that enables you to pull this sort of, oh, don't remove. Don't worry if you remove that, you can put it back. It does say you can put it back. There we go. You must put it back. That's easy. I obviously undid it a little more than was necessary. And then retighten the screws. So the circuit board is back in place. Then we take the enclosed three millimeter Allen key and you get three little bolts which align to the one, two, three holes surrounding the little circuit board. Right, get the right way up, that's not difficult. Get them in so far, don't tighten them yet. Get all three in and then tighten. There we go. And the last one goes underneath. Like so. And then we can tighten these. There's a long end and a short end on the Allen key. So we can just do that final tightness because with handlebars, you want a pretty firm connection to a positive connection so that when you're quilting away, it doesn't uh, wobble. Right, that's that done. Next, we've got our post for the laser light. That goes in the side of the machine. So that goes in just here. So take off the, the, the nut and take off the washer and reverse them so that the washer goes closest to the machine into the little hole. And then you can tighten that up with an adjustable wrench or spanner. I don't know where I've put mine, I've put it somewhere safe. Right, then we attach the laser light. So the laser light has got an end like this which goes into the machine just underneath the handy quilter logo and the laser light itself, uh, which when you, when it's shipped is normally attached to the pin, the chrome pin that I just put in there. So you'd take that off first. Then when you put this in, you've got your screwdriver that we used earlier, either Phillips or flat works for this section. Hold the machine so it doesn't roll away from you. Take the excess of the laser light, wrap it around the handlebar. You don't want it dragging. You don't want it to get run over. And then it goes on like so, so that we can adjust it. When we turn the machine on, that should come on. Then I've got my drift pattern. Pantographs, now they can come on a roll like this one. Uh, we sell some of these, or you can download them from Tinternet. Uh, there's loads of designs available, or you can design your own and just print them out, which would be fine. Quite often they come with a corner, like so, so that you can do a border. They also often come with a reference line, which is the dash line at the top. The dash line is the line that of stitching that you would have sewn that you use for reference so that you get equal spacing between each of your rows on your pantograph. So this goes onto our table and we would put that and hold that in place with masking tape. So let's just put the 
machine on and check it's all working beautifully. I'm going to fold this end back because I don't need that. I'll leave the corner out so that I can tell people about corners on pantographs when they come for a demo to see the Moxie. Beautiful. Plug it in. I put it in a surge protector is a good idea. We supply these when we when we sell our machines we supply a surge protector um, depending on the length that you need. We'd normally do as a default the two meter. So pop that into the socket then we can put our moxie plug in there. And then put that in there. Beep. Perfect. Laser lights on, that's a really good start. And we should be able to do needle up, needle down and plus and minus. So that's cool. Right. I will move the rails back in place and have a go with quilting from the back. So that's it for setting up our table quilting from the back kit. The other thing that we enclose with our offer is the glide foot, which is really good when you're doing quilting from the back because uh, we're going on and off the quilt quite frequently at the edges. And what you don't want to do is have um, the foot caught underneath the quilt top. So that's a really good foot to have as part of the offer. I hope that's been useful to you and we look forward to seeing you at the Pershaw showroom for a demonstration of our lovely Moxie.